Hi guys. Inside out tracking is great. A camera based standalone system that doesn't require additional hardware to work. What's not to love? Well, let's look into that question as we take a look at the Lighthouse faceplate for the Pimax Crystal Light. Before we go into the Lighthouse faceplate, let us first talk about the two major different types of tracking currently used for VR. We have inside out tracking that tries to compute movement based on camera observations in the headset itself. This is the kind of tracking commonly used for devices like the Quest 3. However, it requires complex algorithms and higher CPU usage as a result. On a standalone headset, this computation is handled by the headset itself. But tethered headsets, you're using the computer's processor for the job. When we have lighthouse tracking, where the headset computes its location based on a marker based system, which is sweeping across the play area with infrared beams, which the headset sensors can detect. This solution is much more simple with less complex algorithms needed, but does require external hardware in the form of base stations. What the Lighthouse faceplate does is to enable the usage of both tracking systems for the Pimax Crystal Light. Offering either as an option gives us the ability to pick whatever best suits our environment, but at a cost. More on that later on. As inside out tracking uses cameras, black and white ones in the case of the Crystal Light, we have some of the limitations a camera does. It doesn't work well in low light, will lose tracking in the dark, and is only as good as the detail in the scene. And of course, the camera quality. So if we're in a mostly featureless room or have a poor lighting, then we're going to struggle to track our space at all. When CPU cycles are tied up in processing our real world position, they're not available for important tasks in our simulator. The inverse is also true, where tracking is impacted by our high CPU usage in games. And this can cause frame drop or stutter our position. So if we want to remove these variables, base station tracking can unlock silky smooth movement at very low hardware cost, at least in terms of the computer usage. So now you know why we might want Lighthouse tracking, let's take a look at Pimax's offering. The box for the Crystal Light Lighthouse faceplate is a no frills affair with a decidedly cheap looking plastic faceplate inside. No offense meant here Pimax, but it does look pretty cheaply made considering the customer outlay in terms of money. The faceplates is in keeping with the aesthetic of the original and only has some minor differences. The new sensors, some openings for them and a circuit plus plug to interface with our headset. Installation is a simple affair. Use a pry tool or plastic knife, just nothing metal in the corners of the faceplate. It'll pop right off. There's not much connected to the old faceplate but the Lighthouse one has a connector in the middle. Carefully line that up and then the rest will snap into place with some gentle even pressure. Then we move on to the software. Make sure you have the latest Crystal Light firmware and software installed. In the device settings page, you'll see Lighthouse or Inside Out Tracking. Select Lighthouse and the headset will restart. Now make sure your base station is visible to the headset at this stage, or you'll see colored boxes in the headset. The first time around this freaked me right out, I thought I'd done something wrong, and obviously I hadn't. If the software doesn't detect the lighthouse, which happened to me, give the computer a restart, and you should be good to go. Headset tracking. Don't know if you can see this, but we get little bit of jittering when we are moving around fast. You see that jitter there? Um, 
and that's not unusual but when we're, when we're not looking at that see a little bit of jitter on closed up objects and if we get close to the steering wheel again not noticeable on smaller objects large objects you can see it a little bit but actually we got good lighting in this room and tracking isn't too bad i mean yeah pit lane speed limit is 72 kilometers per hour let's do a few laps the exit mm. looks clear stay behind the line see if we have the same feeling about it after that i've incidentally not actually tested the gt3 yet with the new tires so this could be absolutely horrendous We're not here to set any amazing lap times. Kind of wondering why our friend Trading Paints has not loaded, but hey, again, not really a problem. I'll let this guy behind go. Go on, mate. So, yeah. Tracking seems stable. And this is with the latest... This is with the latest firmware, so we should have the best tracking that is available on either the light or the Super. I mean, it is very stable. I'm quite happy. If I turn the lights off, it's going to stop working, um, and that's not great, but that is part and parcel of inside-out tracking. I'm trying something a little bit different to what we've done in the past in videos, and instead of having a bit of testing time and coming up with my thoughts, I thought it'd be good to actually give you my live thoughts on what's going on and what I'm thinking about as I'm testing in the uh, rig. So I'm quite happy with the tracking here. It is very stable. We're going to go in and do a lap and then uh, I'll probably go in the pits and give you my thoughts. We we have good hardware, but we are dragging on that hardware with some of the things that we want to do. If we want to stream, for example. And we want this to be as fluid as it can be. So let's go and switch over to base station tracking and see Watch if that in the pits. makes any Pit difference to us. Meters. Thanks, crew chief. Thanks for interrupting me. Yeah, so we want to make sure that we can see some benefit from having this lighthouse tracking in place. Um, I have run it before, so I do know the answer to that. But I've also seen examples of where I've had terrible lighting issues with uh, inside out tracking. So yeah, let's go into the pits. And I'm not gonna make you go through the pits like I am now. <laughs> But uh, yeah, let's go and swap out for the lighthouse tracking faceplate and see the meters. benefits. You have to forgive me for my lack of camera on this second half of the video. It takes it looks clear. Unfortunately, my studio PC. Ooh, <laughs> understeer. Oh, that's a black flag. Um, yeah, so you have to forgive me for the lack of camera. The studio PC I'm using, it uh, is overheating in these temperatures and it essentially crashed and won't load up the video. So, sorry about that. Anyway, get back to what we're supposed to be talking about. It's tracking. So, we have a look. We actually can see... Similar movement to what we see 
with inside out tracking, there's not a huge amount of difference if you look up close objects. And the stats, at least, generally look the same. But the the biggest difference for me in using the lighthouse tracking is the small, almost imperceptible movement. That you, it's very hard to um, describe, but it's it just feels more fluid when you're driving. Anything that immerses you more is fantastic, in my view. Because we're capped at 90 FPS, the stats are going to look the same because we're still at 90 FPS. But there is some difference in the perception of the movement. I mean, when we're doing fast movements, don't want to do it while I'm on track. Let me slow down here where I'm not going to be in the way of anyone. But you can see I can move my head around and it's not doing any of the weird things that you normally get happening with inside out tracking. It doesn't, doesn't do it too badly on the crystal light, but it still happens. And I actually have, you can't tell because my camera's not working, but I have no lights on. So I'm doing this effectively in the dark. Which uh, is great. Actually, a couple of months back I did a race with a friend of mine. We were doing a, an enduro six hours. I forgot to put the lights on, knowing that we were going from uh, day to night in real life. And I essentially had to go and pit as soon as possible because the, the last half an hour of my stint was hell. Um, it just had stopped tracking. We already know that lighthouse tracking is good for that. But what this faceplate gives us is the ability to do both. We don't just have to do inside out tracking. We don't just have to use a lighthouse. So giving us options is what this is all about. It's a shame that it has to cost us so much to do that. But having anything like that available is only going to help everyone to enjoy the VR experience Find these track limits, please, David. without exception. During testing, I noticed something that I hadn't noticed before with the Pimax Crystal Light inside out tracking. And that was that it actually seems to work quite well now, at least in comparison to the lighthouse tracking. Before, it was miles behind and definitely had some performance issues. Now, it's nice to be wrong. And when testing it out right now, I noticed that the Pimax Crystal Light inside out tracking is now very close to the Lighthouse tracking. In fact, it's 99.9% .9 there. So you don't notice too much of a frame drop unless you're streaming, have overlays running, and any other jazz then the performance gap grows a bit. But otherwise, Pimax have done a great job on tracking in their latest Inside Out release. That's not to say it's perfect. I still notice a few issues here and there, but that's why you pay the premium for a Lighthouse tracking headset. At $200, it is hard to see this as a value option. However, if your environment necessitates racing in low light levels, or you want the best low system usage tracking available, this faceplate gives you the options that few other manufacturers provide. First, let's applaud Pimax for giving us multiple ways of tracking our headset. 
few other headsets offer this. Come to think of it, I can't think of a non-Pimax headset that lets you choose inside out or lighthouse tracking on the same headset. Installation is a breeze and the software swap over relatively straightforward. When the headset isn't seeing the base station, it'd be nice to show a message in the headset rather than these janky things. But seeing as the software kind of lets us know that that's the case, I don't see it as a huge issue. Once installed, the tracking is everything we've come to expect from Valve's tracking system. Flawless fluid movement that gives us a little bit of extra system headroom. It's a shame that this add-on is so expensive and I'd like to see Pimax offer a discount to Crystal Light owners that have purchased the headset in the last six months, as we never know if we'll need such tracking until we've got the headset, and then it's too late. Another little gripe here, the Lighthouse faceplate is often out of stock. So there is a chance your headset will be gathering dust if you find you can't cope with the built-in inside-out tracking. At the time of writing, the Super does not yet have the option of a Lighthouse faceplate. So again, many are playing the long waiting game that Pimax is so famous for. I love that this faceplate is an option and can't thank Pimax enough for giving us all some much needed PC VR variety. If you are able to source one and have the financial means to do so without breaking the bank, then you'll experience another step up in quality for the Crystal Light. Now, I hope you've enjoyed looking through the Crystal Light Lighthouse faceplate with me. Lighthouse faceplate, face covering, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, if you've enjoyed going through that with me, uh, then mash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It uh, helps other people to find my content and it'd be much appreciated. Okay, so it's goodbye from me for now and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.